In this video, we're going to talk about a company that for 33 years was the largest trucking company in the United States. Until they weren't. We're talking about Associated Transport. Well, everybody, I've been telling you at the end of every uh, video to, you know, comment email me do anything you want to uh let me know what trucking companies you guys want to hear about and i got an overwhelming amount of people that wanted to hear about associated transport it's a company i didn't really know much about and for good reason they were gone before i was born but in looking into it i did find some information i'm going to tell you about this information usually i get an overwhelming amount of information I could find different places and I really couldn't find much on Associated Transport so most all of this is coming from uh, an article for Freight Waves that was written by Scott Mall back in uh, March 2021 he wrote it so thank you Scott uh, give credit where credit's due and I don't know where he got all the info but it's pretty interesting it seems to me that this company was doomed almost right from the start. Now, they were the biggest company in America once, and for two decades they were very profitable, but it didn't come easy. Now, what's really interesting is the way it started for the times. First of all, it started in 1941. So, you know, we're now in World War II. Uh, you can't buy equipment. You know, yeah, it seems like an odd time that they did this. But it, the company wasn't really started as much as it was consolidated. It was seven trucking companies that all came together. I did, we was able to find pictures of some of these, but not all of them. So, I'll show them to you here as I'm naming off the companies that consolidated together to form one company. Uh, there was Barnwell Brothers out of Burlington, North Carolina. Consolidated Motor Lines out of Hartford, Connecticut. Horton Motor Lines out of Charlotte, North Carolina. McCarthy Freight System out of Taunton, Massachusetts. Uh, M. Moran Transport Lines out of Buffalo, New York. And Southeastern Freight Lines out of Atlanta. At the end, I'm going to tell you what's interesting about the Southeastern Freight Lines. Uh, but we, we got to get through the whole story to get to that. So when they combined, the U.S. Department of Justice was not happy about it at all. They did not want to do it. Uh, they thought that they would be too big. Uh, but they did it anyway. <laughs> I just think it's funny. They told the government, that even back then they were telling the government to go stick it. Yeah, anyway. So when they combined together, this actually gave them 3,500 vehicles and 24,000 miles of routes from the Gulf of Mexico to Canada. But remember, this is at the time when you had to own your routes or however it worked. I, I'm spending a lot of time looking into how things used to be compared to how they are now kind of confusing <laughs> but I I will get it all I will get it all uh, this also gave them 117 terminals and 117 terminals was just too many they knew that almost right away they were just going to be spending way too much money to upkeep these terminals so they almost right away consolidated the 72 terminals so the first year they had revenues of $227 million. This is in 1941. Or 19, it might have been 1942, because they were formed in 1941. So I guess the first full year would have been 1942. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. But they showed a loss of $1.25 million. Seems like an awful lot for that time. Their biggest problem that they had at the time was that their rates could not compete. The money they needed to make, they could not compete with the railroads on the same routes. Railroads were actually getting these routes cheaper. Well, let's see what they did about it. So, 
1944, they showed revenue of 19.2 million with a loss of 425,000. In 1945, they showed revenue of 18 million with a loss of 600,000. Yeah, so that that's 1.2 million dollars less revenue that they made and lost 175,000 more. I guess the percentage, <laughs> they actually did a little bit, but I don't, nah, no, nah, I can't make that work. I can kind of make it work, but I don't know. Lost revenue doesn't seem like any way, anything that's ever good. Uh, so in 1947, they made a large staff cut and that allowed them to start competing with the railroads with the rates. Uh, in the same year, they cut their number of terminals down to 38 total terminals. Uh, and I believe the one the farthest west, they were all over the east, uh, but the one farthest west was in Tennessee. So this was mainly an east coast company. Although I didn't see that anywhere, but uh, it seems that that was its region, the, the east side of the country, or maybe even the eastern third of the country. Uh, the problem that they faced, remember I had said earlier that you couldn't buy equipment. You couldn't buy cars, you couldn't buy anything during the war efforts. Everything went to the war. And so when the war was over, they had to take out a loan to replace their equipment that was worn down. Uh, that's pretty interesting. It's something that we haven't dealt with now, and, and hopefully we never have to deal with that again, but I, I don't see it, uh, not with the way the world is now. So it does say that in the 1950s and 60s, they were a profitable company. Up until this point, their corporate headquarters were based in New York City. But in 1955, they moved to a brand new corporate office in Rochester, New York. So in 1969, they had uh, 80 station offices, they called them. Uh, but they had cut their terminals down to just 21 in six states. So let's see what else happened in 69. So the problems that they had in 1969 kind of the beginning of their downfall was they were charged with over 5,000 safety violations by the Federal Federal Highway Administration. Pretty interesting. Uh, they also had a lot of staffing problems because some of their terms, the terminals were Teamster terminals. Uh, I guess they weren't all, but they had trouble staffing. I guess they had, had arguments with the uh, with the Teamsters, I don't know. It, it just the, the Freight Waves article really just said that they had staffing problems um, at those terminals. So here's where it all goes south. In 1976, they acquired Eastern Freightways. Eastern Freightways. I said earlier about the other company, which was which was uh, Southeastern Freight Lines. No, it was the Eastern Freightways is the one that, that really uh, kind of has me a little bit baffled. And again, let me finish this story and we'll get to why. Um, but yeah, they purchased Eastern Freightways in order to gain access to their equipment and to their routes, to their lanes. Again, you had your lanes. But apparently Eastern Freightways is a company that had been failing for a number of years. So they immediately, Eastern Freightways had 73 terminals and immediately when Associated bought them, uh, they shut down all the terminals. Uh, but unfortunately, Eastern had a lot of debt and they had to deal with that. Well, they couldn't deal with it. And by the end of 1976, Associated Transport went bankrupt, even though they were the biggest company at the time. Here's my question about that, though. They bought it all in the same year. Did they not know about this debt? Did they just willy-nilly go buy a company and say, hey, we're going to get these routes and stuff? Uh, was it an accounting mess up or what? That they bought a company and couldn't even last one year because of the debt that they acquired through buying the company. That's just amazing. I, uh, I don't get it. I, I, yeah. I mean, it's way above my pay grade, obviously, and things were done different way back then, but 
Were they really done differently back then? It seems to me the more of these companies that I do that went bankrupt are kind of a lot of them following the exact same thing years after years after years doing the same things acquiring companies and not being able to handle it it's just the way it seems so let me tell you the interesting thing here about the um, uh, about the the eastern freightways connection here so they had this Eastern Freightways that they owned and, you know, it all went bankrupt. It doesn't say anything that they sold Eastern Freightways off or what exactly happened to it. As I'm looking for pictures of trucks for Eastern Freightways, the only thing that I'm finding is the Eastern Freightways that we know of that New England Motor Freight uh, bought at one point. So. I don't really know how this company still exists or maybe there was a separate company and I'm just not getting the picture you, you know the pictures of it but here's what came here's what got me to a it's kind of a baffling uh, realization here the way things were connected even back then we always seem to find these connections with different companies or weird things that happen so after they went out of business uh, in in 1976 Yes, I had to look at this. I am sorry. Uh, there, what was his part? Stay with me here. <laughs> a guy named Myron, Myron, but they called him Mike Shevel. Uh, he was the vice president of Apex Group for a while in the 50s, and later he was the manager of Associated Transport. Yeah. At one point, the largest trucking company in the United States. Uh, they entered bankruptcy in 1976. And later that year, later that year, Mike Shevel bought New England Motor Freight. And it became part of the Shevel Group. Well, as most of us know, New England Motor Freight later owned Eastern Freightways. So this has me going. I try to keep things separate as to not make the stories too long. But I think the next two that you're going to see out of me are going to be, well, the next two or the next one, probably going to be Eastern Freightways and New England Motor Freight. Uh, yeah, because now I kind of want to see if I can find any kind of link between these companies. But uh, anyway. You know, I always end this way, but I really enjoy your comments. I assure you, if you comment on one of my videos, each and every one of them gets read. Gets read. Red. Yeah, I read each and every one of them. Uh, I enjoy the stories. Uh, I take the recommendations down. You know, this was a company that was highly recommended to me through my comments. Uh, yeah, I really love it. Each and every story uh, gets uh, gets read. I can't respond to all of them. I try to. I do try to respond to most of them. Uh, some things don't need a response, but you always at least get a thumbs up from me. Uh, maybe not on my shorts. I do some short videos of, of show trucks and stuff, but, uh, but as far as this big company stuff, I really appreciate it. If you don't want to comment, uh, you can down here. I'll put my email address is finchresources at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram and on Facebook under the Trucking Resources. And I always encourage people to go on the Trucking Resources Facebook page because I'm going to start doing different things like I, I tell people where I'm at. Uh, I always keep some t-shirts with me and uh, be happy to, to hand out some t-shirts if you see me, you know, park somewhere out here on the road. And also uh, just so that I can do voting and stuff is to see which companies we're going to do here in the future and things like that. So, hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Check out some of the other videos and I'll catch you on the next one.